A few years ago, I made a couple chess boards and I was really happy with how they turned out, but I've always wanted to improve on the design. So when a friend of mine asked if I could make him a new version, I told him, chess, chess I can. So there were always a few things that I wanted to change after I made those first couple chess boards. And I've really just been waiting to find the time and an opportunity to make a new and improved version. This one is a similar design to the one I made in the past, but as we go through the build process, I want to highlight the areas where I made some changes and some improvements, just so we can see how the new one compares to the original. Alright, let's jump into it. This build can basically be broken down into three separate parts the actual chessboard, the box that holds the board and the pieces, and then the actual pieces themselves. So I started off by making the actual board and that started by cutting two inch wide strips of walnut and maple. I also wanted to add just a slight detail in between the squares, so I cut thin strips of mahogany that would go between the walnut and the maple. Once the glue had dried, I could cross cut the board into two inch strips again, and this would give me two by two squares. And again, I added thin strips of mahogany for this glue up as well. So once that glue up was dry, I could run the whole board through the drum sander to get it nice and flat. At this point, I had initially planned to resaw the board so I could get a couple veneers and I could make multiple chess boards, but I ran into a couple really obvious problems. First, the board was already pretty thin just because of the amount of material I had to make it in the first place, so resawing it accurately might have been a little bit tricky and B, which was the most obvious and I was the most oblivious to, was the fact that I didn't have a bandsaw available to me that was big enough to resaw the entire board. Duh. <laughs> so instead, I decided to plane down the entire board to about 1 16th of an inch thick, and I did this by attaching it to a piece of MDF with super glue and blue painter's tape then using the Jonathan Katz Moses 24 inch planer and it worked like a charm. With my chessboard veneer ready to go, I could glue it to a piece of MDF and I did this by using the most expensive clamp that I own. Using a veneer and an MDF base for the board was the first improvement that I did over my original design and it's probably the most important. The first time I made these chess boards, I made them completely out of solid wood, which worked fine, but they have a much higher chance of cupping or bowing throughout the seasons. And making them this new way, however, will hopefully make them much more stable. So with the board cut to final dimension, I started to work on the trim. And the first step for this was to glue some more thin mahogany strips to some strips of walnut. So with the board pretty much done, I could turn my attention to making the box, which would hold the board 
as well as have a compartment for all the pieces. And this started with milling some chunks of eight quarter walnut, which I wanted to get flat and square, but keep as thick as possible, as this will dictate the height of the compartment underneath the board. So with all the pieces milled to equal, but maximum thick nigh, or is it thicknesses? I could cut rabbits onto the top and bottom of each piece, which would allow the board to sit into the box as well as a bottom panel to be attached. I could then glue in the last few strips of mahogany into the upper rabbits just to add a nice little visual detail, then trim those flush. From there, I could start cutting the miters for the box. I did this for one side first and referenced the actual chessboard to make sure I was getting the length just right. Then once I had it dialed in, I could attach a stop lock to my table saw sled and cut the remaining box parts to the exact same dimension. With the box glued up, I could cut some bevels onto the edges, which were purely for aesthetic reasons. And this was another place where I made a change from my original design. My first version had really long bevels, which made for a really large overall footprint and also eliminated a lot of useful space. So this version is a bit smaller and also now has a ledge to set chess pieces or a drink, timer, some food, or your cell phone, maybe can candles or candy or um, your glasses, pencils, pens, paper, mm, magazine, but that's a little bit big. The last part of the box and probably the biggest improvement over the original design is the piece organization that goes inside. The first version didn't have this and I definitely regretted not doing it, so I'm glad I put it into this one. I just used some thin strips of walnut and cut cross lap joints using the drill bit technique, which worked great. I'll put a link in the description to a video we did recently that goes over this method in depth if you want to check it out. Sorry to interrupt, kind of a cool announcement though. And that is this year, once a month, we wanna feature one of your original pieces of work within a video. Now, we even somehow talked Squarespace into sponsoring this. So I don't know, maybe we'll call the segment something like once a month, four eyes viewer features featuring original work presented by Squarespace. I don't know, we'll, we'll work on the title. That's a little clunky. But anyway, this month's feature comes to us from Greg Ryeski. I think I said that right. And he calls it the Fitzgerald coffee table. And honestly, I think it speaks for itself. But if you do want to read more about it and check out some of his other work, as you can see in this footage here, we're going to be keeping all of this cataloged each month on a page on my website. And actually, here's some footage of me building that page using Squarespace, which is what I've been using to build and maintain my site for the last three years. And the reason that I do above all else is honestly just because of how easy it is and how great it looks. 
Now, I've coded my own website in the past, and what I found is the busier and busier that I got with running my business and just wanting to focus on my craft, the less time I had for the ancillary things. And that's just one of the reasons that Squarespace has been such a lifesaver. I'm able to quickly and easily put together any page that I need, and that's going to be especially helpful as I get into more complex things this year like e-commerce. Just the ability to handle the checkout process, the peace of mind of knowing that the payments are secure, and the fact that I can have an unlimited number of products, both physical and digital items in my store, all make going into something new like this and expanding my business just a lot less stressful. Also, from an aesthetic point of view, the fact that every Squarespace design includes built-in mobile responsiveness, so that means it's going to adapt to look great on any device that you might be viewing it on, is just one less thing for me to worry about. So if you're thinking about putting a website together for your business, hobby, or a personal page, whatever, or even if you have an existing website that you think could be better, I do highly urge you to check out Squarespace. Just go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and then when you're ready to launch, use the offer code 4 to save 10% off your first purchase of a domain. Okay, thank you Squarespace, and if you want to have one of your projects featured as well, just go down to the description and there'll be the details right there. All right, let's get back to the show. So the last piece to this puzzle is, well, pieces. I didn't change anything about these from my original design as I really liked how they turned out the first time. They are simple geometric pieces that can be made almost completely on the table saw and I won't go into too much detail explaining these as it's pretty self-explanatory just from watching the footage and they can really easily be modified to fit any chessboard that someone might be building. So with the three main components of the chess set pretty much done, it's time to get everything buttoned up, which is where I'm at right now. If you look close, those pieces aren't even sanded. So I'm gonna get to that and we'll check back in a couple minutes to see how it all comes out. Thank you. 
all right, there it is. This one is officially done. So thank you as always for watching. I really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed this one. Links to everything I talked about are in the description. And of course, until next time, making a chessboard can be fun, maybe even great, but just wait until you're playing and someone says, checkmate.